value. Value is one of those elements that are thrown around a lot in critiques. You may hear art teachers or artist mentors go, oh, what's your values? Or pump up your values or something along those lines. And I guess unless you already know what values are, you're probably sitting there wondering how you can sell your artwork for more money or something. Don't worry, we don't need to track any stock markets, we just need to pay attention to how light and dark your colors are. Let's continue. According to our friend Google, value defines how light or dark a given color or hue can be. Values are best understood when visualized as a scale or gradient from dark to light. The more tonal variance in an image, the lower the contrast. When shades of similar value are used together, they also create a low contrast image. Let me summarize all that in a couple of easier to understand sentences. Value, which can also be called tone in short, is just how light and dark the colors of a piece are. Let's put the color red on a value scale for a minute. When the red gets lighter, this means that they have lighter values. All lighter colors are considered to have a lighter value, the tint white being the lightest value you can have. When the red gets darker, this means it has darker values. All darker colors are considered to have a darker value, the shade black being the darkest value you can have. Value usually goes hand in hand with the principle of design, contrast. So let's talk about how they work together. The majority of the time when creating a piece, you want to have a wide range of values so that there's a center of focus and that different objects within a scene are distinguishable from one another. This means that you'll want your values to have high contrast. When something has a high contrast, it usually has values that range all the way from high to low. Let's take a look at a piece that most of you are probably already familiar with, The Girl with a Pearl Earring by Johannes Vermeer. It's a little tough to see the values properly, so let's convert this piece to black and white. There we are. Now it's easy to see that range. With a black background and a fair-skinned individual, the contrast is very apparent in this piece. She practically pops off the canvas since she's made up of only mid to high values and she's surrounded by the void. You can also take a look at this piece, Portrait of Melissa Thompson by Kehind Wiley. Wiley's piece has the same value as Vermeer's, but this time it's an individual made up of darker values surrounded by mid to light values, making them pop off the canvas just as much. While high contrast is generally desirable, I'd personally argue that it's not necessary. Oh, Jesse, is this another one of your modern artist takes, like the ice dream one from the color video? Actually, no. But before I get to that, let's move on to low contrast. Low contrast is pretty well just the opposite of high contrast. Low contrast pieces either have a similar range of values, or they just have such a wide variety that there's no room for contrast anymore. With most pieces, low contrast is avoided, since it can be difficult to distinguish forms from one another. If you want a tip, actually, looking at the piece and squinting at it is a good way to see whether it's easy to distinguish forms or not. If it's hard to tell what it is when it's blurry, then you may want to either raise or lower the value of whatever section you're looking at. However, like I mentioned a few seconds ago, high contrast isn't always necessary. I'm going to introduce this next piece to you already in black and white, just so it gets my point across a little better. This is Impression Sunrise by Claude Monet, painted in 1872. When just looking at the values, you can barely tell what's going on in this piece. If you've already seen it before, then you already know, but would you believe me if I said there was actually a sunset on a cloudy harbor in the background? That's because with a ton of Monet's paintings, he didn't rely on value to distinguish his forms. He relied on color. Artists nowadays can avoid the low contrast dilemma as well with line art. A low contrast palette can easily be solved with a distinguished line art that practically cuts out all the pieces for you, whether the line art is dark or light. Digital artists also have the option of certain filters and functions that can show the accurate values of their color choices. Contrast within values can also be used to create something called atmospheric perspective or aerial perspective. If you've ever been somewhere high up or looked out onto a mountain range or cityscape, you may notice that things in the distance seem to begin to disappear. This is atmospheric perspective, the effect the atmosphere has on objects as they go further away into the distance. As they go further away, the values get lighter. Artists use this effect to show parts of a landscape growing further into the distance, but it's also a technique favored by character artists to either emphasize foreshortening or to show the distance between limbs or certain parts of a character. But value isn't just all about contrast. Value is part of what adds to the mood of a piece. If you remember in the color video on this channel, I mentioned that the mood of a piece's palette is usually determined by the color scheme, saturation, and value. Usually pieces with higher saturation and lighter values tend to be happier or more lighthearted, whereas pieces with lower saturation and darker moods tend to be sad or mysterious or moody. For instance, let's take a look at the cover art from the game Rhyme versus a screenshot from the game Hollow Knight. Both of these screenshots have predominantly blue color schemes. And like, yeah, I use blue in the color video too, but it's a really versatile color. And also my favorite one. But comparing the two, you get two completely different feelings. While Rhyme feels very soothing and somewhat peaceful, Hollow Knight feels eerie and a little sad. Looking at the values of each game, Hollow Knight uses far deeper tones while Rhyme sticks with lighter tones with lower contrast, relying more on color to distinguish different sections just like Monet did. But again, while this can apply to most pieces, it isn't necessarily true 100% of the time. Let's look at one more screenshot from Hollow Knight, which still uses predominantly dominantly low values, but this mood feels different, doesn't it? Now it all feels calming and atmospheric. 
In this case, it has to do with the difference in subject matter. A bench next to a light post in a lush forest versus a well in a dusty and abandoned looking area. But this shows that all elements of art work together in order for a piece to be successful. Value isn't a very complex element, but it has such a wide range of possibilities in art because of its very flexible rules. Understanding and making sure that your values have purpose is what's most important, and once you have that down, you're bound to create some stunning works of art. For your next piece, experiment with different kinds of values. Create a piece that's super high contrast, and then create another that's pretty low contrast. Maybe you want to try darker values, or you can play with lighter values and come up with different moods you can set based on those values you chose, and the colors within those values. If you're a teacher, we have worksheets on the topic, which you can find on our website along with other art resources for your classroom, link down below. If you liked what you saw, be sure to leave a like on this video, comment down below to let us know what you'd like to see us do next, and hit subscribe so you never miss an upload. Join our little art community with the links down below, and support us on Patreon to get sneak peeks, critiques, and teaching resources. If you enjoyed this video, here's a couple other videos you can check out next.